admixture holds that uh, humans and Neanderthals interbred. They had sex anywhere between 40 to 80,000 years ago. They had kids. And we were a much more numerous group than humans were, than the Neanderthals. We yeah. numbered them 10 to 1, and slowly, gradually, <clears throat> over the years, their DNA just whittled away, just got grounded away. And we kept some of that, but the Neanderthals themselves disappeared because they had sex with us. In other words, that's the reason they're not around today. They had sex with us. That's the theory. They shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> And, uh, and so, you know, the Neanderthals ne never really became extinct. They became us. That's, that's what the theory says. The Neanderthals never became extinct. They okay. became us. Okay. That okay. Was, that's what they're saying. So what's wrong with it? Well, there's... I mean, uh, there's probably a lot of things wrong with it, but what do you want to talk about in this? Video? Well, it, to, to begin with, uh, they did many tests on mitochondrial DNA which is, uh, again, a part of the DNA that's transferred from mother to children. Okay? To any, it could be females or males, it doesn't matter. But it's, it comes, we, it's the mother that bequeaths it yeah. to us, right? And we have no Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA. We have no Neanderthal mothers. You only have human mothers, which is predictable. <laughs> Quite predictable, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you, that. Yeah, yeah, no surprise there. Uh, we have no Y chromosomes uh, from Neanderthals, which means males today, human males, have no Neanderthal fathers. Yeah. So the only uh, kids that survived were females <laughs> that came from Neanderthal fathers and human mothers. That's supposedly, that's what the theory, or that's what the objective data shows today. Okay. And the only way they rationalize all that is that they, they try to the rationalize DNA was kind away. of whittled away, so that's why it can't be found nowadays. So what they did over time, you know, they, they, they kept insisting because they want to prove that mixture at all costs. You know, they, this has little to do with science; it's got to do with politics. They're, they're trying to explain why the Neanderthals died. That's yeah, that was and, the whole point of this. Yeah, story. and so the, they brought the geneticists in, or they just barged in. I don't know which of the two. <laughs> and, yeah, because uh, they, they wanted that business, they wanted to get into the uh, Neanderthal well, it business. Well, sounds like a genetic issue. Yeah, uh, you would think. But then what happened is they did all these genetic tests. They all failed to show any, uh, you know, that we had any mitochondrial DNA. So they said, well, how about nuclear DNA? Nuclear DNA is the DNA contained in the nucleus of the cell, right? And so they said, well, why don't we look at the nucleus of the cell? the nuclear DNA, and they did what is called the genome. A genome is the uh, material that's contained, you know, the genetic material that's contained in the cell. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so they said, let's do a genome, a complete genome on the Neanderthals. And they, they were able to find three different samples, and they did a, a genome. And the project, uh, the uh, article from this project came out in 2010. And... Um, and what the, what the uh, uh, article says, what the paper said, was what their findings were that uh, new, uh, Neanderthals uh, or humans have between 1 and 4% Neanderthal DNA match. In other words, 1 to 4% of our DNA matches that of Neanderthal for any human, any individual human. From the nucleus. Right. So, so if I take your DNA and do an analysis, we will find that there's anywhere between 1 and 4% of your DNA that matches that of Neanderthals. So these three Neanderthals, they did the genome on. Okay? Okay. And, um, and so from that tiny amount, remember, we failed mitochondria, we failed Y chromosome, but from this 2% of this 4%, later they revised it to 2%, but from this tiny amount, they made a mountain out of a molehill. They said, ah, we have proven admixture. We have proven with this that humans and Neanderthals had sex and kids anywhere between 40 to 80,000 years ago. Because look, here's the evidence. But doesn't that have to do with our common ancestor? They deny that possibility. They say, no, it has to do only with the fact that we had sex with them, again, anywhere between 40 and, 40, uh, and 80,000 years ago. Okay, within that time frame, we had sex, we had kids, and we are the kids. We are the offspring. Okay, but um, 
uh, we have to look at what their uh, starting hypothesis was, what their premise was. How did you know what were their predictions when they started to do the uh, genome, right? Mm -hmm. And and here you you have it stated by Svante Pavel. He was the head of the project, and he states this at the Nobel Conference 50 in 2014. And he says the following. He says, if there was a contribution from Neanderthals to Europeans, we would expect Europeans to share more genetic variants with Neanderthals than what Africans do since there's never been Neanderthals in Africa. That's what he says at the conference a few years earlier you know, when they published their report. This comes directly from their report. To test whether Neanderthals are more closely related to some present-day humans than to others, we identified SNPs, called, uh, that stands for Single Nucleotide Polymorphism, LLs. Uh, an LL is a variant of a uh, uh, form of a given gene. By comparing one randomly chosen sequence from each of two present-day humans and asking if the Neanderthals match the LLs of the two individuals equally often, if gene flow between Neanderthals and mother and humans ceased before differentiation between present-day human populations began, this is expected to be the case no matter which present-day humans are compared. Under the alternative model of later gene flow between Neanderthals and modern humans, we expect Neanderthals to match alleles in individuals from, from some parts of the world more often than the others. Let me translate that into English now. What, it, what are they saying here? They're saying, if there was no interbreeding, if we get it from 500,000 years ago, all humans today should have approximately the same amount yeah. of DNA. If instead, if instead we get it from when we mated with the Neanderthals 40 to 80,000 years ago, which was close. after we came out of Africa, and it would be then some people, some people should have more DNA than others. It would, and that's it would be localized. Yeah, and that's exactly what they found. They found that some people have more than others. But specifically whom? Well, they found out that Europeans, white people like me, right, we have more Neanderthal uh, DNA than Africans. They look like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have more Neanderthal uh, DNA than Africans. But something is wrong with this working hypothesis. See, because this prediction. It should be that Africans should have no mitochondria and no nuclear DNA whatsoever. Because Neanderthals because never, went to, never went to Africa. And he's saying that. He's saying they never went to Africa, so they should have none. In fact, that's exactly what the popularization magazines interpreted. They said, oh, Africans should have none. That's what the study found. That's not what the study found. Here, here are what the popularization magazines say. Here's 2014 LA Times. Tiny amounts of Neanderthal DNA have been found in Europeans and Asians, but not in sub-Saharan Africans whose ancestors stuck around when their cousins left the continent. So they're saying Africans should have none. Here's another one. Science and Tech uh, Mail Online, 2016. Indigenous Sub-Saharan Africans have been found to have no Neanderthal DNA as their ancestors did not follow the same migration route. Mm -hmm. Here's National Geographic 2016. Most Europeans and Asians have between 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA. Indigenous Sub-Saharan Africans have none or very little Neanderthal DNA because their ancestors did not migrate through Eurasia. So, so all these people, I mean, is there a difference between none and some? between none and very little. Wasn't that just a question of the migration routes, like who went where? No, it's got to, it's got to do with the following. If, if Africans never made contact with Neanderthal, they should have none. And if, yeah. and if we later contaminated them with our Neanderthal DNA, then all bets are off. Anything goes then. What do you mean anything goes? Yeah, in other words, Africans should have zero, none whatsoever DNA because they never were in contact with Neanderthal. Neanderthals were never in Africa. Yeah. If Africans have some, and that's what these guys show, I'll read a couple just to make sure of that point. Here's Pablo TED Talk 2011. Statistically speaking, there is no difference in how often the uh, Neanderthal matches one African or the other. But this is different if we now look at the European individual and an African. Then, significantly more often does a Neanderthal match the European rather than the African. So he's not saying the Africans have zero. He's saying we have more. That's all he's saying. Here's Swante Pablo 2013 uh, Nova. 
When we compared one African to a European individual, the Neanderthal matched the European individual more often than the African. That's what you'd expect, right? No, you should expect zero. But if the, See, if why, the Africans, why some? Why, if why the Africans went to Europe, uh, yeah, but not, interbred, yeah, and then came back to Africa. Ah, but they're not saying that. They're not. If 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 they came back to Africa, then all bets are off. Then we don't know how much anybody should have. But I thought they. If everybody got contaminated. But I thought they're showing that Africans now have less than the Europeans because they're only dependent on who came back rather than who stayed. If that's true. That prediction should also follow for the Asians. American Indians and the Papua New Guineans have more Neanderthal blood than Europeans. The people who came into, the humans that came into Europe yeah. and mated with a the Neanderthal, they should have more than anybody else. That's what we should, that's not the case. The Asians have more than the Europeans. The Europeans have more than the, than the Africans who should have none. And if there is backflow, if the if they came back and they everybody slept with everybody, then we don't know what they should. They should be equal all over. Or they should all be equal, or we lost complete track of who should have what. Like so you can't make a prediction. But these people say, oh, we've proven it because we have more than the Africans. Well, why do the Asians and the American Indians have more? Well, we don't know. That, that's interesting. You know, here you, you see what, what they're saying. Here... Um, Here's Fante Pavo again, 2013, in the uh, Genome Canada. Had there been contribution from Neanderthals, I would have expected it to be in Europe and nowhere else, because Neanderthals lived in Europe and Western Asia. But we found it also in China, and even in Papua New Guinea, where everyone is sure there had never been Neanderthals. And he's right, that's what you should, but that's not what their working hypothesis was. Theirs was... We can predict that we have more than the Africans. Yeah, well, we, should, we can also predict using that logic that we should have more than the Asians, and that wasn't the case. They but they, they kind of downplay that, and they say, oh, look, we've proven it because we have more than the so Africans. they were wrong, but they... What, what, no, it means that, that they, our starting point is wrong, that, that their, their well, premise is wrong. What do they say today, wrong. then? Huh? What do they say today? This is how they explain this away. Here you have uh, Lopez, what is it, 2015. It says, using genome-wide data back to Africa and mixture into the Horn of Africa was dated to around 3,000 years ago. What is he saying? He's saying that there, was, there were Europeans who came back to Africa, to the jungles of Africa, 3,000 years ago. Now, if you do your numbers, 3,000 years ago, what is that? The Romans, uh, the ancient Greeks, the Persians, who came back to Africa 3,000 years ago and impregnated the African ladies in the jungle? This is nonsense. These people are saying that the reason that Africans have some Neanderthal DNA is that someone came back from Europe and impregnated them and, you know, gave the genes back. Now, well, the then only we, reason. Yeah, but then we lost all track. And then how do we explain the Asians? You know, how does how the Asians and the American Indians ended up with more? Well, it says, here's Svante Pablo, Novo Conference 50 in 2014. The model we proposed is to say that when these modern humans came out of Africa, they presumably passed by the Middle East. These early humans mixed with the Neanderthals and then went on to become the ancestors of everybody outside of Africa. In other words, they're saying that humans came out of Africa. Yeah. And, they, and before they got to Europe, they encountered them in Israel and Iraq, in the Middle East. And there they, they got together, they had a big party, they had sex, kids, the majority of the flow, the stream, went into Europe, and they made it with a Europe with the Neanderthals there. But a small trickle went to Asia, and somehow that they they think that that created more Neanderthal DNA over there than in Europe, than among no Europeans. Sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. They can't explain it away. In other words, they can't. What they do is they downplay the Asian part, and they and they you know highlight. The African. Oh, look, we have more than the African. Well, how about the Asians? They have more than, than the Europeans. How do you explain that? Well, you know, that's interesting. Uga. So, what should we do with the geneticists at the Max Planck Institute? Well, let me tell you what I think. Kawabamba!